It's time to look at some Mothman comic books. Mothman is of course the red-eyed winged creature from West Virginia folklore. The character of Mothman does seem like something that would be in a comic book. So of course people who are fans of the folklore would make those. Here we have a comic just called Mothman by Cosmic Barn Productions. I got this comic from a vendor at the Mothman Festival. If you'll look inside, you'll see the artwork is really well done. The comic is split up into two sections. The first one is Story 1, Shadow of Death, and the second is Story 2, The Abridged Mothman. The first story is a fictional work telling the tale of someone investigating the Mothman, and the second is an abridged telling of the Mothman folklore. So I'm going to read the second story, The Abridged Mothman. November 15th, 1966. The TNT area near Point Pleasant, West Virginia. A soundless night except for the rustle of autumn leaves. And then the engine of a speeding car. Tires scream as it turns onto Route 62. Headlights pierce the surrounding blackness. It started out as a simple evening drive, then quickly turned into something more. The 57 Chevy roars to distance its passengers from the nightmare. But the nightmare has wings. Inside the car, eight eyes wide in terror, four hearts beating like jackhammers. As the speedometer climbed, so did their hopes. Then a shadow, fear tightened its grip. The nightmare would not fade with the morning sun. This night will stay with them forever. This night, this creature will become legend. Pandora's box burst wide open upon the days and weeks that followed. Sightings of the Mothman were almost daily. Menacing men in black and flying saucers also appeared in Mason County. To say it was a strange time would be an understatement. I was 13, my brother was 10. The main topic of conversation at school wasn't the Mothman, but the flying saucers. Maybe they were from Mars. If our parents were concerned about any of this, they didn't show it. Life at home went on as before. Then the world stopped at 4.58 p.m. on December 15th, 1967. A corroded eye bar snapped, and the silver bridge plunged into the cold Ohio River. 46 people lost their lives. Fantastic tales gave way to tragic reality. Instead of UFOs gliding through the night sky, hearses led somber funeral processions. The men in black were now pallbearers and other mourners. The Mothman was rarely seen here again. There were those who said it would be some time before things went back to normal in Point Pleasant, but normal was gone. Decades later, the 2002 movie Mothman Prophecies renewed interest in the strange happenings of 1966 and 67. The legend has become so popular, there is now a statue, museum, and annual festival I now in my 60s draw Mothman for fun and profit. The big finish of the Mothman prophecies is the collapse of the Silver Bridge. But unless I see the smoking gun, I believe the connection is coincidence. I can accept structural failure, not a 13 month mystery culminating in 46 deaths. It was a horrible tragedy, not an unsolved mystery. Coincidence, until proven otherwise. As for those who saw the Mothman and other bizarre things, their stories remain the same, their accounts never changing after all these years. I have been present when some told their stories again. I believe they saw what they saw, whatever that might be. These are folks that have nothing to gain by telling tall tales. Even I've been asked if I had seen any of those strange events. No I didn't, and thank God. When you think about it, Mothman started out as oral storytelling and newspaper reports. If you notice, a lot of Mothman art makes reference to the newspapers. The Mothman Museum features many Mothman press clippings. Newspapers are still an integral part of the Mothman character. Comic books, particularly superhero comics, also started in the newspaper. Early comic books were actually compilations of different newspaper comic panels all put together into one book. Another thing that Mothman shares with comic books is his name. The name Mothman was given to him by the newspapers, and it was based off the Batman TV show which was running at the time. And Batman, of course, comes from comic books. So next we have three issues of this Mothman comic called Mothman Tunes. We have issue number one, issue number two, Mothman Strikes, 
And issue number three, Mothman on the Road. Here is the writer and the illustrator. These are sort of comedic in tone, like something you'd see on the comic page of the newspaper. Inside I have a little postcard, Mothman Rocks. I got this comic from the Mothman Museum gift shop. Inside here you can see the art. They're very quick one panel jokes. And here we have a message from the writer and the illustrator. Jay, who is the writer, says, Mothman lore has been somewhat of an influence of mine, and always been seen as a doom and gloom thing. I started going against the norm with Mothman stickers and postcards, betraying him in a lighter side. And Larry, who is the illustrator, says, Cartoonists are sort of different from normal folks. No matter how serious something may be, we tend to see things in it to laugh about. That's just the way we are. Lots of people in and around Point Pleasant, West Virginia, take the Mothman sightings very seriously. It gives the small, normal-feeling town a sort of mysterious aura. But I am a cartoonist to my very bones. No matter how badly a nighttime ride through the TNT area may give me the creeps, I'm somehow compelled to find a way to laugh at the Mothman. So yeah, I'll just read a few of these. You've never heard of the Mothman? You must not be from around here. In Point Pleasant, everyone poses with the Mothman statue. Here at the first annual Mothman look-alike convention, all was going well until the crowd turned ugly. Mothman in black. Once again, he wins the Easter egg hunt. He always had trouble sleeping on his back. Mothman soon discovered he couldn't rest on the lines like the birds did. So the next one, issue two, is called Mothman Strikes. The joke, of course, being that he's on strike. Inside, we have yet another message from the writer and the illustrator. Jay says, After the success of our first book, I wasted no time in writing new material for Mothman Strikes. Don't worry, I'm also working on material for a third issue. Since the Mothman hasn't given us a negative reaction, we'll keep turning them out. I'm sure you'll rest easy receiving that news. Larry says, Luckily, Mothman did not come after us for the first issue of Mothman Tunes. So here we go again. Jay and I are once more risking our necks to give you some more glimpses into the life of Point Pleasant, West Virginia's resident creature of the night. So once again, I'll show you a few of these. Little Willie Burke was the first and only kid to see if he was real or just wearing a costume. Poor Mothman, terrible at hide and seek. Mothman and the Men in Black, shock and roll. One show tonight only. Hopefully not coming to a town near you. And here's the latest one that I have right now. Mothman Tunes, issue three. On the road. You got a Mothman for President sign. The Mothman Museum also has a sticker for that. On the back you can see the artist at the Mothman Museum. Well, 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 here we are again, once more digging into the lighter side of life and times of the legendary Mothman. Who keeps playing Fly Like an Eagle? Making snow angels was no problem for him. Are there any who oppose Mr. Mothman's bid as presidential candidate? Being given the nod as a presidential candidate for the Mothman was easy. Finding a running mate wasn't. If elected, would you use Air Force One to fly? He was talented enough to make the band, but fitting in the tour bus would have seen a problem. So there we have three issues of Mothman tunes. I wanted to briefly mention this book, Return to Point Pleasant. I got this from the writer Chad Lambert at the Mothman Festival. The art on the inside is pretty amazing, and it's in full color too. It's very interesting reading a comic book with locations that you're familiar with. This book has a lot of nods to Point Pleasant and Mothman fans. It makes reference to the Point Pleasant Registry. Here you can see the park in Point Pleasant. They even make mention of local news station. There's a location I've been to. And there is even Fort Randolph. It's a very interesting book. I guess it could be classified as horror and sci-fi. I really enjoyed the ridiculous futuristic Point Pleasant, West Virginia. Jeff Lamsley, owner of the Mothman Museum, organizer of the Mothman Festival, and author of many Mothman books, said he first got into Mothman when he read the Mothman Prophecies. He said he just found it cool that it was a book about the area he grew up in. 
If you're familiar with Point Pleasant and West Virginia, maybe this book will give you that same feeling. Return to Point Pleasant also had an art book called Art of Point Pleasant. Here you can see variant covers and unused art. The book also contains a foreword by Jeff Wamsley and an afterword by the author Chad Lambert. Also look, there's the Flatwoods monster on the back. Here's another comic by Chad Lambert called Lost Grooves. It's a variant Point Pleasant cover and the book even has an appearance by Mothman. So those are some Mothman comic books. Now as a bonus, some Mothman coloring books. These are two coloring books I got from a vendor at the Mothman Festival. This one is just entitled Mothman, and this one's called Monsters from the Mountains. Here you can see Mothman, the TNT area. There's a legendary Flatwoods monster from West Virginia folklore, 1952. Here we have the Men in Black. Check this out. It looks like a cool 1960s Mothman poster. Mothman 66. Here we have a depiction of the first Mothman sighting from November 15th, 1966. These are supposed to be the Scarberry Mallets. Here's Mothman on the back cover. Monsters from the Mountains. Here once again we had the Flatwoods Monster from West Virginia Folklore, September 12th, 1952. The Flatwoods Monster is frightening away Kathleen May and the children. Here's a strange folklore from 1966, Huntington, West Virginia. This is one of the UFO cases that John Keel, writer of the Mothman Prophecies, was investigating at the time. In the story, these people were driving a bloodmobile when they were attacked by an object with metal claws. Here's a version of the cover that you can color. Looks very much like a comic book. Once again, we have the Scarberry and Mallets in Roger's Black 57 Chevy from the first sighting on November 15th, 1966. Here again we have the Men in Black. This time they're intimidating reporter Mary Heyer. You can see here it says Point Pleasant Press Office. There's Mothman clippings on the bulletin board. And Mary's typing at her typewriter. Here we have Indrid Cold, another West Virginia folklore from 1966. In this red panel truck is Woodrow Derenberger. This story takes place on November 2nd, 1966. Here we have John Keel, author of the Mothman Prophecies. And here we have reporter Mary Heyer from Point Pleasant, West Virginia. She worked at the Athens Messenger and wrote a column called Where the Waters Mingle. So there you have it. Not only Mothman comic books, but Mothman coloring books as well. Thanks for watching.